Hey guys, Megan here. If you're wondering if I put this sage plant here on purpose, the answer is yes. I wanted to talk about um, the the kind of the lifestyle of like being high functioning autistic, but coming off so often as normal and what happens whenever my autism like or whenever my autism comes out or like shows and in, in like in what kind of way like how that what it looks like and kind of the uh reactions I've received from other people I'm a hot no mess that no red lipstick can hide if I tell someone that I am like on the autism spectrum what I hear a lot is like, oh, you don't seem autistic at all, and like doubt, they end up doubting my diagnosis. And I mean, it's, it's funny because one, <laughs> they think that they're like unique in doing this and like, oh wow, no one's ever like questioned my diagnosis before, thanks. Um, you're really a special unicorn with that sarcasm. Um, but, uh, but, but like what they don't see are all of these other parts. What they see is like a carefully calculated, like mirroring, like show. And they don't see like these like rigid tendencies and like they don't experience the sensory overload. And I'm learning that if, if I want to feel an understood in life. I need to start communicating these things. And so there are these like bad sides that maybe only a few people see or strangers if I'm having like a sensory meltdown in the middle of like New York City, which has definitely happened before. Um, uh, or like weeks at a time just having just straight off panic attacks because my neighborhood was noisy or something, like sensory-based panic attacks. It's they're really fun. You should try them. Just kidding. <laughs> it's kind of funny. My mirroring is pretty, but pretty good. But like sometimes it's really off. Like if I, if a bunch of, if I'm around like the manly men types, and they're like shouting at each other like as jokes, and I try to mirror them. There's kind of a gender bias where they, <laughs> that, that is funny in this instinct because they'll be like, Whoa, Megan, are you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, no, I'm just trying to do what you're doing so I can fit in. This is how I like s try to socialize. With that said, I wanted to talk about what a lot of people do see and, um, and what are some traits of Asperger's that are a good thing and autism that are a good thing. <clears throat> and one of them is a really, really intense hyper focus and being able to get like re really big projects done in like a really short amount of time, all things considered. And like I have these, I have this obsession, I have these obsessions, and um, for me, they resonate with making things and art and. Um, I'm obsessed with making music videos because that is more similar. Hold on. Alexa, turn down the volume 15%. Thank you. I don't know why I said thank you to a robot, but anyways. Um, so I'm obsessed with creating music videos because those are what my thoughts are like. Um, I think in like pictures and I don't really think in um, words that much so there is a difference there my experience of music and of like people talking in general are like more so tones which is, I'm, not, I'm listening to Sigur Rós and they use a lot of like it's very melodic and um, I think they came up with their own language either that or they're speaking uh, they, they're from Iceland, and they're, so, so it's a lot of like, <laughs> that's kind of how I experience words. Um, uh, but anyways, I love making visual things because that's what my thoughts look like, and I feel like I'm communicating with people 
when I make these things because the, the words just don't do it for me. Um, and um, another like good thing is because my existence revolves around living in this world that is not meant for my brain. Um, I say this all the time, it's like you are in a human body but your brain is not human like uh, or doesn't really operate in a fully human manner um, like an alien in a human body but um, uh, my existence is learning coming up with strategies to um, deal with a system difference. It's like we have different operating systems and I have to constantly be um, uh, uh, decoding or um, um, translating what everyone else is thinking versus what I am thinking. And um, so this ability allows me to um, learn things on the spot like there's no other way that I my mind does this it's like I have to I can't do it your way so I have to come up with this a whole new system to for me to even understand what you're saying so this um, so this makes it a lot easier for me to learn something in a very short amount of time um, and at that it's not even learning a system it's coming up with a completely new system um, for doing things and um, also I think another point that isn't really talked about that much is uh, um, I think Temple Grin talks about this a lot but um, a lot of people on the spectrum see in pictures blah 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 that's said before um, but our inner worlds are very vivid. Um, when I was in kindergarten, I had a hard time paying attention, not because I had ADHD, but because it was so much more fun inside my head. I could make anything and it was just as realistic to me. So a lot of people on the spectrum have this like weird balance of their sensory world is really intense. Um, we experience sounds and like, uh, I, I swear I see colors more vividly. Um, because whenever I'll, I'm walking down the street, I'll be like, oh my gosh, it's such a beautiful day. Look at everything. Look at, do you see those leaves? Do you see those individual branches? And like, I can find four leaf clovers really easily too, because it's like, do you hone in? Um, and I already talked about the auditory differences. Um, so the the exterior world is really intense, but also <laughs> for a lot of people on the spectrum, the interior world is really intense too. And for me, that's my favorite part because it allows me to be very vision oriented, rigid vision, granted, I'm not very good at compromising my vision. Um, but it's very developed and seemingly easy to, like, for me, it's a treat and it's fun to do the things I'm interested in doing, even if I'm spending, even if I'm not sleeping or eating to do them, like, to just crank out project after project after project. Um, I need to be stimulated a lot, but not, like not tradi in traditional senses in like um yeah it ha it's but it, it all it's all like so relative because it's only things i'm interested in see like and i stopped crying even just talking about my special interests so i think i'm gonna leave it at that but um thanks for watching sorry for crying earlier but it that was a very realistic take on what it's like panicking over something as small as a minor schedule change. I guess I should say that what triggered me wanting to do this video was a really... A friend is doing me a favor and picking me up and driving me somewhere. And they made like a last minute change or like request and it sent me into this like state of panic. And 
I am just frustrated with myself that I can't be more flexible. Listen, my existence is not understanding what's going on and dealing with it anyways. Damn it, why am I so emotional talking about this? Um, and I want to say this with like any mental like uh, thing that someone decides they want to talk to you about. Don't assume that you like understand like a person's struggle. Um, it's there's a whole lot of stigma talking about this type of stuff. People don't do it for attention. They they do it to feel understood. Um, and you might see like the very fluffy sides, like we see of everyone. Um, especially in the age of social media, but if someone wants to take the time to uh, say that they are struggling with something, um, maybe assume that there's a lot, large portion of their life that you don't see and don't understand, because that's how it is with everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, nice uh, one-sided chatting, and uh, see you on the flip tube or whatever. I don't know what that means.